When Hyundai first kicked off their all-electric Ioniq sub-brand, they started things off conservatively. The Ioniq sedan is a nice vehicle, very practical, but a bit subtle. This, their latest offering, the Ioniq 5, throws the subtleties out the door, and it's all the better for it. So today, I'm gonna to show you the ins and outs of this all-electric crossover that you need to know. As you can see, the Ionic 5 is a really attractive crossover. I love the blend of 1980s styling. It's a rip off of one of Hyundai's first production cars and these sort of super future vibes. This thing looks like it came right out of cyberpunk and I really appreciate the styling. The impact this thing has in person, especially in this digital teal color, which has a cool color shift from gray to blue to green metallic is great. And it's really in the stylistic details that make this thing so cool. It's elements like the full LED headlights with multiple dimensions to them and the big LED tail light strip that says Ionic 5 and white script. And I love the sort of turbo fin 1980s aesthetic wrapped around the fender trim and the cool 20 inch basket weave style wheels. When you look at this thing, it just, it leaves an impression upon you. I cannot state how many compliments I've received driving this thing around LA. And fortunately, there is a ton of substance here to back the style. For the time being, there are three powertrain combinations you can get the Ionic 5 in. The standard range Ionic 5 has a 56 kilowatt hour battery pack and a single motor good for 167 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque, which is sent to the rear wheels. Though I suspect just about everyone will jump from that to the larger battery pack, which is a 77 kilowatt hour pack and can be paired with either a single motor or a more potent dual motor combination like this test car. With the 77 kilowatt hour pack and a single motor setup, the Ionic 5 has 225 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque, along with a 303 claimed mile range. Very, very impressive for right around 45 grand. That 56 kilowatt hour pack model for reference is right around 41 grand. What's clever about Hyundai's battery tech is that it operates on an 800 volt electrical architecture, which means it does support 350 kilowatt DC fast charging, if you can find the charger fast enough to do that. Basically what this means is that the battery can go from 10% charge to 80% charge in just 18 minutes. However, if you want extra performance and all weather utility, you can add a dual motor setup, making this thing all wheel drive. In this case, this guy now produces 320 horsepower and 446 pound feet of torque. The trade off is that range dropped to a claimed 256 miles. But this thing does zero to 60 in four and a half seconds. So for the speed demons out there, it might be a worthwhile trade off for you. While we're on the topic of stats and range, I suspect I should talk about the range I've experienced with this vehicle because that's a huge talking point when it comes to EVs. What are they like in the real world? Well, this Ionic 5 was delivered to me with a 95% state of charge. And I then drove it for the next few days around LA until it got down to 16%. That's 79% of available charge and I drove 205 miles. If you extrapolate from that, you have a total range of 259 miles, right on the estimates. For what it's worth, the trip computer says that driving around LA, I've averaged 3.4 miles to a kilowatt hour. That's kind of like your MPG equivalent that you care about in the real world. And what you do is you multiply it 3.4 miles times an available 77 kilowatt hour pack and you see that's right around 260 miles. Though asterisk, just like an engine or anything else, batteries are not 100% efficient, so you don't get 100% of that 77 kilowatts to use at your disposal. But still, the claimed range is dead on. It's your boy, just checking in. Are you enjoying the video so far? Well, of course you are. That's because this is some grade A primo content we're talking about. So go ahead and show your support by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. It's free and helps the channel. All right, back to the video.
We will revisit the stats and figures later on in this video, I promise, because they are important. But let's talk about some Ionic 5 isms. Take, for example, this interior. It's a blend of conventional modern Hyundai aesthetic with some future funky elements to kind of match the exterior styling. If you've been in other recent Hyundai products, you'll feel right at home here. We have twin 12 and a half inch displays, huge crystal clear, really nice to use, with the same infotainment setup found in other Hyundai vehicles. Simple, straightforward, easy to use. This fully loaded limited all-wheel drive trim rings in at 55 grand before any sort of incentives or kickbacks. And as you'd expect from 55 grand worth of Hyundai vehicle, it's very, very nicely equipped because matching with those big screens, we have synthetic leather seats, which are heated and ventilated. We have a heated steering wheel, wireless phone charging, Bose audio, this massive panoramic sunroof, the list goes on. And don't forget the standard suite of Hyundai driving assists like lane keep assist, radar guided cruise control, automatic collision braking, rear cross traffic alert, things like that. While this particular interior spec, black on silver, isn't the best at showcasing it, I love the use of just some funky design elements, like this sort of floating armrest here in the door card, and some of the textures and materials happening in here do just feel upscale and quite nice. Also helping things out is the fact that this thing, despite the looks, is quite roomy in here thanks to a 118 inch wheelbase. And that means that at six foot one, I fit very, very comfortably in both the front and back seats of this vehicle. There's tons of room to stretch out in the back seats. And I love just the functionality that Hyundai puts into a lot of their vehicles that you'll find here in the Ionic 5. Those rear seats are multifunctional. Not only do they fold down for more storage, but they actually recline, which is great for longer road trips. And don't forget features like sunshades in the back, which in general, I'm just a huge fan of in all cars. That's such a nice thing to have, especially in bright, sunny LA here. Oh, and for the drivers out there, this thing can actually handle. Like most EVs, the Ionic 5 has a bunch of batteries in the floor, which means the center of gravity is quite low. And with the predictable stability of all-wheel drive, this thing puts the power down to the ground. Though, also helping things is the fact that those 20-inch wheels look cool, but they're also shod in 255 section with rubber. So this thing is seriously planted on the pavement. Now, for what it's worth, I've also tested a Kia EV6, mechanically very similar to this, though it had the 56 kilowatt hour pack and a single motor, making it rear wheel drive. And that's definitely the sportier of the two if you are cross shopping. The Kia is calibrated in a bit more sporty way. It kind of matches the sportier look between the two. But make no doubt about it, this thing can hang on a winding road. Remember a minute or two ago when I mentioned there are more stats and figures we need to talk about when it comes to this vehicle? Well, it's time to talk about them. Prices start at 41 grand for the 56 kilowatt hour battery pack model, though I suspect you're gonna want the 77 kilowatt hour pack one. I mean, who wouldn't? That bumps the price to the 45 grand. Add the dual motor all wheel drive, much of luxury spine on this limited model trim, it's 55 grand as I previously mentioned, which is a big chunk of change. However, if we look at the tried and true alternatives from Tesla, for example, this thing splits the difference in size and functionality between a Model 3 sedan and the Model Y crossover. Yet, this thing is about six grand less than a Model 3 sedan base price versus base price. Though the asterisk there is obviously the stronger performance from the Tesla, more range, greater power, things like that. If we look at a Model Y, well, the price discrepancy is huge, to be frank, it's enormous. So the value proposition is definitely there against Tesla, but what about some of the others? Earlier, I also mentioned the Kia EV6, which shares a lot of the same mechanical parts under the skin as this vehicle. And as you might expect, they go toe to toe in terms of content and pricing. It's very, very close. It really is the difference in the personality between the two. If you want the sportier of the two, you want the Kia. If you want the more kind of comfortable and slightly luxury oriented one, you want the Hyundai. A few months back on this channel, I reviewed the Volkswagen ID4 EV crossover, and while I thought it's a really cool looking vehicle, the numbers just don't really match up. I think this is the better value proposition. And it's a similar story with the Mustang Mach-E. Now, sure, you can absolutely get that in sportier form factors if you want, but again, it's the price differential. I think for the money you pay, this ends up being a slightly better value, and in my opinion, I think this is cooler looking, though that is very subjective, I know. With the Ionic 5, Hyundai is offering killer styling, solid performance, and an attractive price point for what you get. 
That makes it an easy recommendation from me to you to go check one out if you're interested. In any case, guys, my name is Jake. You've been watching Drive, Break, Fix, Repeat, and I'll see you guys next time or go do more fun things with cars. All right, bye.